So let's come to how long I'm out for. The surgeon said I shouldn't play any forehands for f So guys, I'm injured. As you've seen by the video title, I've done a Sverev and got injured possibly at the worst time, pretty much mid-training week at Moratoglu, and also obviously just before I was planning to go to Tunisia and play two weeks of futures tournaments where I would be competing again my first ATP point. Now it obviously meant this injury that I couldn't train with any of the pros that were there including Medvedev, Coco Goff, Yafo and loads more others. I was only able to play 45 minutes of backhands every session which is how we were able to film the sessions with Patrick Moritoglu and it also meant of course that even after planning, booking flights and being excited for and preparing for my futures tournaments I unfortunately was not able to play them. So in this video I'm going to explain everything and I'm going to split this video into five parts. First is what happened, second is going to be exactly what's wrong with my shoulder, third is going to be how long the recovery is going to take, fourth is going to be what methods I'm putting in place as I'm recovering and fifth is what's the plan going forwards with tournaments and YouTube. So let's start off with what happened. So at the beginning of the first week in Moratoglu I was playing in one of the sessions and I'd done a warm-up, I'd done injury prevention exercises, that was totally normal, but towards the beginning of the session I hit a forehand and had a very sharp pain in my right shoulder as I was hitting the forehand, and so pretty quickly I had to stop because it was too uncomfortable. So straight after this session I actually went to see the physio who said to me that it looked like some sort of rotator cuff instability and therefore it was putting extra strain on the back of my shoulder. So the method he put in place was to basically do lots of injury prevention exercises, so rotator cuff strengthening exercises, that I was doing every day in the gym. I was also taking anti-inflammatories to try and help with some sort of inflammation if there was any. I was doing cryotherapy, a hot and cold work on my shoulder. I was doing foam rolling, manual releases with a massage gun on my shoulder. All of those things to try and help it become better because obviously at that time, I didn't know how serious it was. And after a few days of that not really working and not improving, I then thought to myself, well, let's see the doctor at the academy to really make sure and check up what this is because it could be serious. So the doctor, when we saw him, did an ultrasound on my shoulder and he said that he saw quite a lot of inflammation. He said it could be some sort of rotator cuff tendonitis of the tendons in the, in the back of the shoulder, but he said that I should go and get it checked out by having an MRI scan. So that meant the next day we flew back to the UK and the next day after that we saw a shoulder specialist and I actually got what's called an MRI arthrogram, which means they inject some dye into the shoulder to see the little tissues and the intricate details within the shoulder that you wouldn't be able to see normally. So the final verdict on the shoulder was that there was no ruptures in terms of the ligaments, tendons, or specifically the labrum, which was the most important part of the shoulder that we didn't want to be damaged. So that's a positive. But on the other side, there were some signs of some minor synovitis, which is basically inflammation within the joint capsule. And what had most likely happened was, as I was hitting one of my shots, where the humerus attaches to the ball and socket joint within the shoulder, that had slightly slipped out of position as I was hitting one of the balls. And then the impact of the forehand will have caused some of the ligaments within the shoulder to stretch, and they haven't really returned back to the original position straight away, which obviously means that then I'm getting pain as the shoulder's kind of slipping around a little bit, which is obviously very, very uncomfortable. So let's come to how long I'm out for. The surgeon said I shouldn't play any forehands for four weeks, which obviously means that I can still play backhands and 50% on the serve, but the main thing was don't play for four weeks to try and reduce the inflammation and to try and make sure that you're not irritating the shoulder any further. And whilst you're doing that, you need to make sure you're doing all of the recovery, which I'll come to in a second. Now, after that process is done, I have a two week period where I'll be playing myself back into shape, basically hitting a lot of balls to prepare myself for tournaments. So from the time that this video is actually shot, it will be one month till I'm back competing again. So not too long in terms of an injury, so nothing major like six months, which is amazing. But again, these are the little bumps in the road that we're gonna see on Road to 180p point that we just have to get through together and really work towards. And it shows that every journey is not gonna be a sunshine and rainbows the whole way through. I've been pretty fortunate in the last few years with no injuries. So it was gonna come at some point, even with the amount of gym work and injury prevention training that I was doing. Now the silver lining to this whole situation is that I can still do strength and conditioning training. I was able to do a lot of strength and conditioning training at Moratoglu. I was doing speed sessions, strength sessions, all of that type of stuff, injury prevention sessions, and stuff in the ice bath in terms of recovery. So I had a great time in terms of getting my body in shape. And that's the thing I talked to my physio about as well. Over the next four weeks, I'm gonna make it my mission to be as fit as possible, working two hours plus in the gym every day, making sure I'm doing my injury prevention, my mobility, working on strength, speed, power, footwork, loads of different elements of my tennis game to make sure that when I come back to tennis, I'm already physically ready for futures tournaments. Now, of course, tennis isn't also all about physical. I've also 
wanted to work on my mental training for a while and now is the perfect time. So we've decided to partner with a brand called Apeak. Now they have an app within the app store. It's an app that helps you with your mental training and I've been using them recently to work on visualization which is basically 30 minutes a day where I'm visualizing different scenarios in my head which is supposed to actually emulate you playing tennis and it has the same effect. I'll talk about Apeak more in future videos but if you want to go check out what they do now and download the app feel free there'll be a link in the description. I think that's going to take my mental game to the next level and it's going to be super important as part of the journey going forwards. Now I will also be doing two to three tennis sessions per week mainly focusing on the backhand side working on drills, slices, backhand volley and some serves and maybe a few smashes basically just to keep me in tennis kind of fit shape and do as much as I can. I obviously don't want to overplay on that side because at Moritoglu I was having some compensation pain in the shoulder when I'm playing so many backhands so I'm going to keep it easy from that perspective. I also want to say that being at Moritoglu with an injury was probably one of the hardest mental battles I've had to have in a while because when you're playing there and you're only training backhands for 45 minutes a day playing sponge ball with your forehand side and you're watching players like Coco Goff, Medvedev, Tiafo, who you, who I actually had the opportunity to play with. I was offered to hit with these players, but obviously I couldn't accept because I was injured, which is super frustrating, not only in terms of the content, but also in terms of a general tennis experience and improving. And it's just a really gutting situation overall. And I'm really kind of disappointed that it's had to happen. But on the bright side, I guess you can look at it from two perspectives. The other perspective is, of course, that it's not a major injury. I haven't torn anything in my shoulder. I haven't dislocated anything, which has mean, meant that I have to be out for six months. It's only a, a temporary thing. And so I can you kind of use this as a little bit of a reset and a um, chance to focus on my mental, but also my physical state within kind of everything. Also maybe see some friends and take a little bit of a break from the constant grind of playing tournaments because it can get pretty draining at some times. So I'm just going to use this as a very positive thing. We're going to keep the series going, keep the positive vibes, because of course this is not the end of the world. There will be little bumps in the journey. I'm looking forward to showing you guys how I'm recovering and looking forward to getting back out on the court. As I'm sure you guys are looking forward to seeing me on the court and me competing again, as am I. So I'll see you guys in the next video and I hope you enjoyed.